Hi, I'm Brian Gillooly, Editor-in-Chief of Events for Information Week. We're here at the Information Week 500 Conference, and I'm here with Paul D. Podesta, who is the Head of Player Development and Scouting for the New York Mets. Uh, just left the stage and was talking about the use of information technology in baseball and how it's changing the entire game and uh, the user and customer experience. And Paul, one of the things you were talking about that I thought was in com uh, completely intriguing was this concept of how much information you're gathering about players and how that's giving you a competitive edge in the game. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. I think the you know the availability of data has really changed dramatically over the course of the past 15 years, and we're able to capture things now that we weren't able. To uh, to capture then. You know, 15 years ago it was just at bats and hits, you know, and doubles, triples, homers, that type of thing. Now we can talk, now we can capture things like how hard a ball was hit off the bat, exactly at what trajectory, exactly where it was going, um, you know, all those types of things. So it's, it's a, a tremendous wealth of data. You know, we're still trying to figure out exactly how we ought to use it, you know, effectively, uh, but there's a lot more to be had and, and certainly gives us a much better view into what actually happens you know in the games we still have a tremendous challenge in, in terms of using that to predict what will happen you know in, in future games but um, accurately assessing what has happened in the past um, we're a lot further along than we, than we were 15 years ago one of the examples you gave that I thought was really interesting uh, was talking about kind of flipping the model about how you look at um, uh, players in baseball and, and in particular plays who did well and who didn't do well and I think it was a great lesson to the people in the IT industry about how they might want to rethink the way they look at winning and losing. Uh, can you give us that example again about the line drive to right field? Sure. Well, there, there are a lot of different things that happen in a baseball game. And, and again, traditional baseball scoring, uh, while good, wasn't always perfectly efficient. So um, you know, if a guy hits a line drive right at someone, oftentimes in the dugout they'd say, oh, that evens itself out. Or if he hits a bloop over the shortstop's head and it falls in, people would joke and say, well, that's a line drive in the box score. You know, we, we took the approach, well, well, not necessarily. You know, and those things don't necessarily even themselves out. So uh, we need to do a better job of really assessing what happened and, and uh, setting up credit and blame or allocating credit and blame in, in a better way. So if a guy does ha hit that little bloop hit, maybe it doesn't count as much as, as even the line drive out. Uh, knowing that oftentimes that line drive is is a is a better approach, you know, or, or certainly a better process. You also made a comment about affirmation bias. I thought it was so interesting. I tweeted it out as soon as you said it. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and uh, how we shouldn't have certain biases uh, about uh, our, our businesses and how it might limit our success if we do? Sure. Well, oftentimes, and this is just human nature. We're all we're all guilty of it. I know I am, but. Um, once you've made up your mind about something, you tend to seek out only those facts that reinforce what you've already decided to believe. And if there's uh, a fact that comes to light that goes against what you believe, you tend to disregard it, right? So, um, you know, one of the things we try to do is just be as open-minded as possible. You know, when even after we formed an opinion about something, I think we have to be open-minded about uh, new circumstances that come to light or new facts that come to light, and and be willing to change our minds. You know, and be willing to open be open-minded and. Uh, and not be afraid of, of maybe the, um, uh, you know, the backlash that comes with changing your mind. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for us, I think it's actually a pretty liberating uh, experience. Well, Paul, uh, speaking of predictions and whatnot, I, I think I'll make a prediction, then I'll let you make one as well. As a Mets fan, I'm going to predict that the Mets win the 2012 World Series. What do you think? I'm in. All yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, Paul, thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.